Hello everyone, and welcome to the Dias Cast. I am Russell Son, and with me I have... <laughs> when last we left off, Aquans and Jonas had uh, just managed to weather a bad storm in Vern's Run and capture a uh, Court of the Seven operative, Naren, who had been running the gambling ship that they had previously visited. Turning him over to local council, they were able to interrogate him and find out that a do at least a dozen operatives... Or at least uh, Naren suspects at least a dozen operatives of the Court of the Seven are kept, were on board his riverboat coming from Ulrichs. One said operative was found dead, washed up in the river, but not drowned. Signs of injuries on her body consisted of that of a large dog bites bites from a large dog and necrotic damage. Unsure what to make of this for the moment, they decided to lay low for the time and prepare for the coming fight. When they found a, when they spotted a familiar uh, carriage belonging to the slavers that they had first run into when arriving in Vernon's Run, acting quickly, Aquans and Jonas were able to dispatch the slavers and save the two slaves within the cart. A pair of Tengu children, Ray and Daichi, taking them back to the inn. Aquans took them back to the inn in order to get them fed and secured, while Jonas. In the guise of one of uh, the guards, or slavers, took the carriage back to the to its destination. The former tower, which uh, where Master Therian until recently had resided. Working inside, he found two other old friends of theirs, in <laughs> up to their old tricks. Uh, a dwarf by the name of Habrik the Ox, and half over ogre by the name of Orog the Beast. The two grave robbers, whom they had also encountered, who survived the previous encounter, were with, and had now turned to slavery. Specifically, trading in the young Copa Tengu, in hopes, um, it seems, to the, ver to the Court of the Seven operatives coming. Infiltrating the facility, they are able to dispatch everyone there and bring, hopefully bring, the slave trade in Vern's Run to, a, if not its end, at least uh, to the brink of extinction. And that's really all that happened last time. Right. So before I turn it over to you, we have a few housekeeping moments because we did end a little bit uh, there at the end, just while we had just finished up there. So obviously, we go and inform the watch about the tower full of dead bodies yeah. for the second time. But anyway, so we go and inform the watch of that, and I assume you're leaving out the obvious fact that at least a few of the watch officers were on the take from those slavers, as per your agreement. Well, we did say yeah. that, you know, they behave themselves, yeah. that I would pay them some money. Yes. And... I believe you owe them 13 gold. Yeah. That's something we should probably take care of tomorrow. Hmm. We can take care of it now if you want. No, no. <laughs> No. Alright, so we inform them about the tower, full of bodies and the slavers, yep. and then we head back to the inn, yep. where we re uh, reconvene with Ray and Daichi, and get a much needed long rest. Yep. So we took so any damage we took is healed, our spells are back, and we get to prepare new spells. I think we took care of that off camera. But... Well, they can fly, and they know where they're going, so we can just give them some buy them some supplies, and they can head off on their own. Because I don't think it's usually it's really a good idea for them to be here when the Court of the Seven shows up, if the Court of the Seven was indeed the group looking to buy them. Yes. Yes. That'd be a problem. We're not entirely sure what they want with a pair of Tengu, but it could not be anything good. Well, not good for them. No. All right, so I guess that brings us to the question: Is how much, how many supplies are we buying for them? They're also children. <laughs> children eat a lot. All right. Also, they fly, which means that they need high energy. Yes. I'm gonna leave this up to them. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go shopping mm -hmm. for a long rest. Because uh, it was not very late in the day, mm -hmm. we can go and buy whatever they want. 
gold piece value that you think is reasonable for that, and we'll buy those supplies. They can put in the little packs they have, the little jelly packs, and then they can decide where they want to leave. All right. Uh, yeah. How much gold do you have on you, other person, uh, on your person, out of curiosity? Really? All right, hold on a sec. Hmm. Total? Yeah, just just gold, not gems. Just gold, thirteen hundred and seventy-seven gold pieces. I think you're a little off, or is that? <laughs> That's just gold. Yes. Okay, the rest is in gems, okay, because I have over 3,000 gold pieces on me currently. <laughs> well, I have less than you. Hmm. Maybe I should keep an eye on you. I don't know, I'd keep better notes. That, it could be that. Yeah. I assume the rest is in gems you have on you, which is 100 GP gems. Well, I am in the process of trying to figure out how these crystal uh, summoning things work. Okay. Uh, project I have on the go, so... More gems for me is better at the moment. Right. Well, we want... 30 gold seems like a lot to spend on supplies. 30 gold? Yeah. Uh, no. I don't think they can carry that much. Alright, we'll say 10 gold for the supplies. Between the two of them. For food? Well, it's food and supplies and like a, a camping gear and that sort of thing. Things they need in the, the wilderness to survive. I know. <laughs> That's fine, so I'll take off five gold and you do the same. I took off ten, I'll pay for it, it's fine. I have more on me at the moment, apparently. <laughs> it is a tiny amount compared to the resources we currently have. For the moment, yes. Change. That will probably change very quickly. I am in the process of planning on how to copy out, copy all the spells from my spellbook into my new arcane grimoire. Uh, that is expensive, yes. I don't know exactly how much yet, because I haven't finished calculating it all up, up yet. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of gold, and it's going to take a lot of time. Yeah, I have a new grimoire, so I am... Alright, so... Are they going to head off this evening, or tomorrow morning? Uh, given the time... Given the... Uh, <laughs> Given the amount of time we have left before the court arrives, it's probably better they leave as soon as possible. Because, yeah. After we feed them a big meal, yeah. uh, we will uh, wish them well and send them on their way. Yeah. We'll wish them... What we need to do is we should probably take off um, probably with another two gold pieces for our own lodgings. I think we've been a little reticent about keeping up with the amount that we pay for that. Okay, I'll do mark that off. Yeah. Simply because, yeah. All right. I can't remember the last time we paid for our room and board. I have been keeping track of it off camera. I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. Again, it is a drop in the bucket, but it is something we should keep track of. Yes. Well, I lost my coin purse with all the silver in it. So recently, so. Alright, so after we uh, send them off, I think that's everything we had to cover from the last session, so I'm going to turn it over to you now. Um, yeah, actually, they're, after they're gone, mm -hmm. there's one more thing I want to do. I want to go to Wendell's for a few moments. Okay. For the end of the day, and I want to order a spell. Won't take long. Okay, because you're ordering a scroll. So I assume this is a third level scroll. Because he doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have the in stock. No. So I'm going to do that, and then uh, we can... Are you saying what scroll you're ordering, or is this being left a surprise? Uh, this is something I have in mind that I think might come in handy. Mm -hmm. We'll see if it does. So this is being left a surprise. Yes. All right. So he won't tell all of you, but just let it be known that it will be known what scroll he's getting off camera. <laughs> So it is a third level spell scroll. That's because the other way is when the would happen. Yeah. So you do have to mark off the gold you need for that. Yes. Much more expensive. 
expenses of paying for a couple of kids worth of food. Yes. What did we say that cost again? That's three times the spell level. Yeah. And wasn't there discount? The yeah, that's a hundred times the spell level, sorry. Yes, we do have a discount with Wendell, which uh, we have been a little... Sorry? So it would be 240 for that? Yes, 240. Okay. So is there anything else you want to do before we cast the tiny hut and go for our usual ritual for going to sleep? Nope. I'll set up the alarm spell. I probably should have uh, probably should have figured out how much it's going to cost to copy my spell book by this point, but I haven't yet, so we'll proceed. Lots of money. Yeah. All right. So actually, one thing we should probably do soon because uh, Wendell may not have that much. Paper that and we might have to leave Vern's run in a hurry, depending on how this goes. <laughs> how badly the car beats us up. Yeah. I can't right. imagine uh, high level sorcerers, you know, not uh, being concerned about collateral damage. <laughs> There's going to be all sorts of high level spells flying around. And this place might be left a smoking crater by the time we leave. Yes, there have been improvements, but I mean it's halfway there already. Yeah. Anyway, but Pula right. got it started. Yeah. This general might uh, it might finish it off. We don't even know what else is coming with him. Just him, uh -huh. some soldiers, right. and who knows what else. So we turn Yes. Right. Is this uh, scent based? So with advantage? Nope, hearing based. Hearing based? Okay. Natural one. She fell asleep. She fell asleep. But my alarm spell is up. Yep. Oh. Alright. So. Oh, by the way, unless I ever say otherwise, the alarm is silent. So only it'll hear, it'll, like, it'll, it'll hear it in my head to wake me up. No No, I think it's better. This way we can. Uh, Wake me up, I can wake you up, but no one else is aware. Okay. Uh, even with the one, the night goes by uneventfully. That's nice. So, as usual, when we wake up, the hut's still there. We're warm and comfortable. Yep. I mean, the hut is probably about to disappear. Disappears? Yep. All of a sudden, we are very, very cold. It is cold in this room. Below zero. Below zero. So I'm still comfortable thanks to my boots, but yes, you do notice. You didn't notice. I the noticed change. the change, but you're but you're shivering, not me. I on the other hand think it's bloody cold. <laughs> I look over at the window. Is it open? Sorry. What? I look over at the window. Is the window open? No. But you're looking outside. Yeah. There's snow on the ground. Okay, it's autumn at the moment, and still relatively early in autumn, so we shouldn't. Yeah, uh, maybe unless, well, we don't live here. We don't know that the snow comes this early or not. Well, we had a recent, uh, really large storm. Yes. We had some rain yesterday, and apparently overnight, unknown to your familiar, there was another, not intense storm, but uh, another storm, and between all that, it really sucked the heat, apparently, out of the atmosphere, and the last little bit of precipitation came down as well. All right, then. And we have no fireplace in our room. Okay. <laughs> well, there's no fireplace in here. There is one in the common room. Yep, so I think we should go. Should get ready and head downstairs. I don't know. We're going to see if... <laughs> I don't remember if I brought any warm clothing. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Maybe we'll have to go shopping. And you questioned why I bought the boots. Well, I wasn't expecting an early snowstorm. Well, I Yes. Oh well, I should listen to my wizard's mantra, which is always be prepared. Down we go. And apparently, yes, there was a storm last night. Uh, quite windy. A little bit of thunder and lightning, but nothing anywhere near what it was uh, two nights ago now. Uh, Obviously, yeah. we slept through it. <laughs> well, uh, the end result is the temperature really did crash. Uh, and. People don't seem 
I mean, compared to uh, flooding and uh, lightning striking buildings, snowfall is probably a minor concern. Oh no. A little slick. People weren't prepared for it. And yeah, there's a few, well, I can't call them fender benders, but let's just say they're not as smooth and uh, competent in the snow because it's been a year or well, six, eight months since the last time they had to deal with it. And it caught them by surprise. This is every Canadian winter ever. Everyone always forgets how to deal with snow before until it shows up. Yes. And I suggest, even though you're feeling perfectly fine, mm -hmm. that uh, maybe I should go shopping. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Need some warm clothes. Okay, so we have a hearty, warm breakfast, probably some super stew, depending on whatever's on the menu today. Yeah, it's a farmer stew. It's very hearty. Yeah. I imagine, yeah, I imagine it's necessary at this point. Uh, it's kind of fairly served normally anyway because, mm -hmm. well, this is the West Gate and yep. a lot of farmer traffic comes in and out of here and some of them really start early in the morning and mm -hmm. on the way back out after they've stocked up the various marketplaces and whatnot, they pull in here and have a good-sized breakfast. Anyway, it's just one of those things that they tend to do. Yep. Yes, alright, so we head out. Alright. You don't notice this because, well, you have the boots of the winter land. Yep. But now that the temperatures, the sun's up, the temperatures are climbing a little bit, the snow has turned a bit more to slush, and it is very, very slippery on these cobblestones. And Not a problem I, to me at all. <laughs> if I decide I want to go running anywhere, that deck check is going to be involved. It's not so bad. Yes. <laughs> yes, we've not established the educational system in Vern's Run yet. Okay. Just a straight roll? Straight roll. Okay, that's better. 13. And sweating all the time, basically. Yeah, and yeah. And Which I suppose technically I still am. <laughs> yeah. So, you're used to that. But it's yeah. more like a young kid kind of stop and mouth open. Oh, that's kind of cool. I haven't seen that before kind of look. Yes. You notice one or two people mm -hmm. see you or us. It's hard to tell. Mm hmm On the other hand, we have literally killed every single problem that has come into this town <laughs> since we got here. Sure, why not? Yeah. That's terrible. 
Uh, yeah, this is one second. My insight is plus eight. Uh, not really. No. Okay. All right. So we head down, and as we're getting closer to the center of town, we come upon an interesting um, sight. There are two guards. Uh, they have their backs to us currently, mm -hmm. and they seem to be talking to a small group of people. Uh, they seem to be waving their hands, gesticulating. They're almost like they're telling a story, like they're giving an amusing, amusing anecdote or whatever. And it's not really unusual because we do notice the guards often talk to people and they do, I mean, they do interact with the population quite a bit because they are the general population's way of getting to, uh, you know, voice their opinions about things that may need to go to council, all that sort of stuff. So they are just basically the PR people. Yep. The thing about this is usually it's the other way around. It's usually the, the people talking to them. In this case, it's the two guards are going on at length about something. And as we get closer, yep. the people that they're talking to see are, are facing us. Yes. And one of them, I can see how far away we are when this happens, and one of them, we get relatively close, all of a sudden, so over, sees us, and you see that recognition and fear pokes his friend and they they both point and then they head off they're not quite running away because it is slippery but they are moving away from us <laughs> and then once the two guards that are talking to them see that they turn around and you recognize one of them i certainly recognize one of them oh is this one of the guards that was uh, this uh... Is one of I was working with the slavers. Was working with the slavers. The Slash people. former grave robbers. Yes. And he seems quite shocked initially. And the buddy that tries to pull them off and, and uh, across the street in a different direction. Hmm. We seem to be coming infamous. That was good luck for you. You owed him 13 gold. Apparently he's forgotten you owe him money. <laughs> You owe him money. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. So, Whatever's going on here is getting in the way of just general greed. <laughs> It's entirely possible that conversation was about us, I say. That would be the impression I got, and I don't think it was a favorable one. No, but I can understand them not necessarily liking us. We did sort of put them out of business a little bit. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to head on. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of continues a little bit, but as we get closer to the center of town, uh, less so. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the people in this area are merchants, and while well, we did save Yes, and merchants are almost always tend towards uh, <laughs> pleasant trees because they want to sell things. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and I'm going to try and buy a coat. Let's see how successful I am buying a coat. Actually, no, sorry, I don't want a coat. No? Okay. What I want, I want one of those really nice thick woolen cloaks uh, with a hood. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm gonna do that. 
Okay. Put in that role, I can find one relatively easily. It's just going to be expensive because supply and demand and the temperature just drops and everybody wants to warm up. We have gold. That's fine. <laughs> Well, well, here goes the price going up even more. Oh, no, I rolled a 19. Minus one. Minus one, yep. Uh, I, think, I think I could probably convince them that the temperature is going to drop. I shouldn't pay any more than everyone else is paying, at least anyway. That seems fair, yeah. <laughs> but how much is... Uh, and I've got a wool cloak. So how much does that cost you? A little expensive. <laughs> Considering the area of town that we're in, I did want to get a good quality one, not yeah. just some you know, rag. <laughs> right, so you have your wool co cloak. Yes. Yeah. So as we're heading out, uh, two <laughs> guards go and talk to us. They were the two guards that you were talking to yesterday about our little tower full of bodies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could have something to do with the fact that uh, the townspeople are so frightened. That is twice that's happened now. Yeah. Uh, he comes up to me and says, You said that there were bodies in uh, the old tower that Therian used to have? Yes. We checked it out. There's nothing there. Uh, is he telling the truth? Inside check, if you like. Right, I just want to double check that. I'm rolling badly at the moment. Uh, 14. No, sorry. 12. Insight is only plus 6. He seems being to be generally, he seems surprised. Mm -hmm. yeah. he not, I mean, we've dealt with the guards quite a bit over the last well, month almost now. Yes. So you know, we are getting to be known people. And he was kind of surprised that uh, there wasn't anything there. Hmm. He did uh, notice that there were some Bloodstains. Uh, so Where are those came from is anyone's guess, because we didn't really cause them to bleed much. No, we did not. But there was definitely bloodstains on the floors and stairs. Alright, well, we can go there and investigate, but <laughs> we remember where those bodies were. <laughs> you want to do that? Yep. Well, we're relatively close. Yes. So we're uh, in this area, the more affluent area for shopping, mm -hmm. mostly down this way. Uh, so we can head back. Yep. And as we get closer to the dock area, yep. you notice that uh, this has been the area that they've been focusing the most on as a recovery for. They want to get the docks up and running again because it is part of their major commerce. Yep. And that is where they've focused most of their efforts on uh, removing uh, a lot of the debris and some of the damage. You'll notice that it is uh, a bit better. Yes. It's not, it's not fixed. There's still a fair amount of work to do, but it's only been a couple of days. So. They are working feverishly, and you'll notice that there are quite a few uh, workers on hand, and they're all you know, doing things you can. So we head over to here. This is Therian's tower, yep. and the one that the tower the, these slavers are using. It is currently cordoned off. Uh, it has um, a couple of Mm-hmm. Yep. Another thing I noticed is that the uh, the road here seems to have gone. <laughs> uh, the road is still there. Okay, so this is just a map error. Okay. <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> I thought it was something important. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, the road is gone." Oh, the road's still there. All right. <laughs> Just the map error. All right. Well, they happen. Well, I guess we should go in and see what's going on here because we remember where the bodies were. The door is surprisingly not locked, and the reason for it is it looks like it's been busted in. All right. Well, there is your first clue that something's wrong. Well, we did not break it. No, we came in through the secret entrance. Yes. Well, I went in and out of there once. Uh, they let me in and out. 
Yes, but the when we left through this door, the, it was not broken. It was not broken. It was actually everything was perfectly fine, other than the fact that there were dead bodies. All right. Well, I guess we'll go in and take a look around. All right. So we go in. No, no. Someone has uh, taken the grave robbers. <laughs> Someone has robbed the, the well, they weren't gr in graves. But they're not graves yet, so yeah. <laughs> Alright, so you want to search and investigate this place? Yes, with your assistance, because I'm rolling quite badly. <laughs> Alright, double roll. Ooh, hoo -hoo, two 17s. Uh, 22. Alright. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Oh, that's right, you don't have a investigation. Yep, I just have plus 5. Oh, good. They decided to get up and walk out. <laughs> so I assume they are coming up the stairs and out the door and broke the door outwards. Yeah, so you're That's what I think. To continue going down to where the actual combat happened? Yes, I'm definitely going. And just to check, those bloody footprints I see from that roll do not go up, continue up the stairs. They come out the door. Okay, then. Yep. Uh, I say, well, they may have decided to get up and go for a walk. So we go down to... I assume the guards are not following us at this point with the presence of the walking dead, possibly. Uh, they weren't following us at all. Okay. They, once we said that we're going to go check it out, yeah. Just, yeah, just let us know. Uh, they, have other, they, have, they have plenty to do. Yeah. <laughs> Though it is odd they didn't notice that, or if they did, they just didn't mention it. Yes. Out of, curio okay. out of curiosity, uh, is there any light in here? Well, the door is open. So, but once we go down... And there are arrow slits. Yeah. So this floor is relatively well lit. Yes, but, but one, one floor, it's going to be dark. You'll need a light spell. Okay. I, as we go down, I will take out a bit of the phosphorescent moss I use for the light candor, sprinkle it on top of my staff, Speak an incantation softly into it and cause that bioluminescent algae to grow on the crown of my staff. And we now have a bright blue-green light that looks like it's cast through water as we go down. The first floor down uh, is basically a repetition of this floor. Yeah. There seems to be uh, bloody footprints. Mm -hmm. uh, footprints that are, are booted. Mm -hmm. Uh, you do notice that there was a seems like something was dragged on the floor for a little bit. Uh, you'd have to roll again. I mean, if you okay, you don't have uh, you have nature, but you don't have survival. Do you? No, I do not. Though I'm just rolling survival check. Yeah, roll a survival check. Okay, with your assistance. Yeah, I mean I have survival, but you don't get my bonus. No, so it's just my wisdom plus three wisdom. Okay. Uh, oh, that's terrible. Seven. Never mind. Uh, we continue on down to where we had the frost battle. Yeah. So this is uh, this is the next floor down where they actually started dying. Yes. And we notice there is a fair amount of footprints. They're they're not just like if as you surmise initially that these bodies got up and walked away. Mm -hmm. Okay. The undead took our took the grave robbers. And heading further down. 
Because that's where the other, that's where the dwarf and the half ogre were down below. Yeah. There does seem to be some faint footprints heading down. All right. Well, we might as well go down and see, just to make sure. All right. That floor got incinerated. Twice. Yes, twice. <laughs> it was badly scorched. There doesn't seem to be any bodies here, but there also doesn't seem to be any real uh, blood marks. But there are no bodies. And still no glaive. It is the bad penny. Okay, so we are short. We are short. Six corpses. No, five corpses. One did live. Like a, we've encountered zombies before because we they were in they were at the monastery when we uh, met Dorn and uh, fought the Barrow White there. We also found we also encountered one other undead once. Up yeah, the, the larvae. Yeah. So just casting my mind back to remembering the encounter with uh, the zombies. Do these footprints and the style of step and the and dragging feet remind me of that? Oh, okay, Arcana? Yep. This is I assume this was at your assistance, because this is just my personal memory. Yeah. Alright, then. Can't get in there. Okay, 17. That's a pretty good roll. Mm-hmm. The odd thing about this, it seems, not so much as zombies, like they got up and wandered off, but it seems more like something came in, something that wears Yep. And collected the bodies, and somehow while they're doing that, the bodies got torn up, and even though they're already dead, the fluids yep. <laughs> seeped out and made all these gory tracks, and then they were somehow removed. All right, or that the bodies were purposefully damaged. I have, uh, in my studies, obviously, ha at least have some knowledge of the undead. We've encountered a few of them, and I do know there are such things as ghouls, and they eat corpses. Yeah. Uh, well, we both studied this, and we do, we do recognize a lot of the stuff that involves magic, yeah. and this does sound ghoulish. Yes. Uh, but we don't have any personal experience with ghouls. No. And it's hard to tell. All right. I guess we're going to head back up. So someone right. broke into this tower out of all the buildings in town and took those corpses specifically. Yes. That is interesting. Okay, what is she, uh, what is she, uh, wanting to get my attention about? Uh, there's a smell here. Okay, I'll try and perceive through her senses and find out what the smell is. Alright, so... Perception check? Yes. With her senses with advantage? I've already done that. Uh, she didn't roll very well, but you can try just using your perception of her senses to see if, I know this is a bit of negligence. This is, a, this is an odd one, <laughs> okay? Because so, if one... If she already smelled something and you're okay. just trying to figure out what she is. Okay, so just one roll? Okay. Oh dear. That's another seven. Perception is not my strength. Apparently it's not hers today either. Mm -hmm. She has a weird feeling that 
between the two of you, mm. you get a sense of something undead. Okay. But you don't, it is... I'm just going to point the smell at you to see if you can make heads or tails of it, either. Didn't help Alice. <laughs> I will just try and see if I can pick up what you're trying to. Yep. Point that to me. <laughs> well, game is so funny sometimes. I mean, you have luck, I have poor tense. We could have easily succeeded on this if we wanted to. We just think there's more important things coming. Okay, so you actually did succeed. Yeah. Um. <laughs> From the corner, an undead horror lurches towards us that we that myself and my cat just conveniently missed. Exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, this is definitely something we've all we've, we've created and found and been by many dead bodies. Yes. Yes, they start to decompose. Yeah. Undead have this particular, almost necrotic kind of smell to them. Yeah, the ones that are rot, the ones that can rot, obviously. Yeah. And this is definitely something along those lines, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so we think something undead was in here. Yeah, and apparently it's had lunch, carried lunch away. Okay, well, the snowfall is going to be rather inconvenient now. Because that will have covered any uh, tracks from this thing, I suspect, overnight. You do notice, as you head out, they stop instantly. Yeah, they, the snow covered it. Okay, so so much for following bloody footprints. All right. So, last night it, did start, it started off by raining. Mm -hmm. So, it didn't really turn into snow until the wee hours of the morning. So, it may have just washed the blood away. This could easily have happened sometime during the night. Rain's washed it all away, and... All right, then. Well, we go back up to the top, and I guess we inform the guards that something uh, that uh, uh, something undead has uh, decided to uh, abscond with the corpses of the grave ro former grave robbers. <laughs> what do I roll for that? <laughs> do I have to? Yes. Those two guards could have wandered off because this is not important. Wow, they're not doing their job at all. <laughs> well, you've said their bodies are not bodies. They have other jobs to do. Yeah. Well, they're off doing whatever that is. Yes. Um, so we head to the wash house. They're not as inundated with stuff now because it's been a couple of days. Yeah. Things are calming down <laughs> before they calm up. Okay. Just telling them what had happened. They had obviously heard yeah. of I'm just reporting the results of our investigation. Can I get you to roll a general... It's not persuasion. It's general... Is this a general charisma check, please, uh, in your rapport with the guy, the sergeant at the desk? I won't use a portent for this, it's fine. 16, apparently, in total. Right. I mean, I, th I assume we have a reputation for solving problems and honesty at this point. Well, that does seem to go, be coming across, because oh. he obviously recognizes you. Point of order. <laughs> because of how everyone seems to be reacting to us, before we leave the under before we leave the tower... I cancel the light cantrip because it lasts an hour if I don't. Well, unfortunately, he did not say that till now. <laughs> but it doesn't really change anything. No, it just goes out now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he actually recognizes us, which is not a surprise, but he's also very familiar with our track Work. record. Yeah. And he Okay. Says, uh, be aware, I've heard that one of my watch officers is spreading some stupid, nasty rumors about you. 
illegal use of the general population. I have reprimanded him, but he seems to have something against the two of you, and uh, just be aware. I, I nod and thank him for the warning. I inform you of that after we leave. <laughs> that makes sense. Yep, we know who that is. <laughs> we should probably tell him that he's taking bribes too now. <laughs> Alright, doesn't matter. Alright, well, personal <laughs> politics and the watches aside. Alright, we don't know where this thing went, but I have a pretty good idea of a good, I have a good spot to start looking for any undead. And that is in the local cemetery. Oh, good. It's going to be warming up then, probably. Yeah, the slush is pretty much just water now. Okay. And the temperature, yes, is now above zero. Uh, considerably, actually. Now the sun's come out and the, and the storms have finally blown over and the clouds are beginning to go away. The sun is actually heating the place up. And even though the kids are probably upset that the snow's gone, most of the other people are quite happy that it's a nicer day, so. I don't need my cloak anymore. I still yep. have the bag of holding. And, well, you don't care anyway, so <laughs> that's yep. fine. Do you want to stop by the Whippoorwill and have lunch before we head over to the cemetery, which is right... Right there. Yeah, sure, why not? All we know is that some bodies, some dead bodies have gone missing, which is... Yes. <laughs> Alright, so we have lunch. Okay, so... It's just yep. afternoon now, uh, heading towards one. Mm -hmm. Head down to the local church there and the cemetery. And it was remarkably undamaged by the storm. Uh, nothing, it didn't get struck by lightning or anything. It is on the opposite side of the river. <laughs> Do we go over? I so I basically can survey the. Uh, yeah, the... you can just walk along the street and have a look at the cemetery. Before. Okay, I think I'm just going to hopefully with your assistance here, just try and perceive the area and survey it and just try and see if there's any obvious disturbances, because I assume the graves have been, by this point, uh, like the bodies have been back in the ground presumably after the grave robbing incident. Oh, well, if I have a choice, I'll make an investigation. Yeah. We are actively doing this. Yeah. Just sort of glancing. Okay. 19. The snow is now melting. Uh, and it melts a little bit faster uh, here for some reason. Um, you don't see anything disturbed. The ground seems perfectly fine. All right, well. Because it happened last time. Yeah. And see, yeah, you can go and knock on the church door if you want and see if they have anything to add to that, but you don't see anything untoward uh, just by investigating this area. I think that's the next best bet. Because if there's any undead, one of the easy first places you'd think of for looking for some sort of undead creature is a graveyard. Yeah. Alright. All right. knock on the door? I will knock on the door. We haven't had much of interactions with anyone in this church. No, actually we have had... No, we did once. When the Grey Rower was happened, we did talk to somebody. Yes. Uh, see if it's the same person. No, actually it is, a, it is indeed the same young priest. Okay. I'm just going to ask this person if there's been any uh, evidence... If there's been any disturbances, we've... I'm going to say that we've... Uh, become aware very recently of some possible undead activity, and we're just wondering if there's if you noticed anything in the graveyard of note. Uh, well, he indeed remembers you. Yes. You are memorable. <laughs> yes. Uh, you did help out last time. He does remember. He does remember you favorably as well. 
Yes. No, that's, that's two times in one month is insane. Well, in a bit, in a twist of irony, it appears that the grave robbers who were robbing your graves last time uh, have been killed, and now have go now their bodies have gone missing. I mean, I find it funny too, so it's fine. <laughs> it's like it's it is. It's almost it's like poetic justice, almost. Yeah, he tries to get these. Tries to come. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Uh, well, God moves in mysterious ways. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, we just need to needed to be double check. First thing you think of when undead is a local se is a near cemetery. Well, if nothing's happened here, that's a good sign, I suspect. All right, uh, thank you for your time. Yep. We'll continue our investigation elsewhere. All right, so where do you want to go? Well, I probably should have checked to see if that per that priest was lying, but since we worked with them previously, I don't think it's fine. For the moment. Okay. I suppose I can't make a retroactive insight check on that priest. It's fine. It's fine. I, I didn't think of it at the time. You can, you can do it, but just go with this advantage you're doing it from your memory. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah, and he had no real reason to lie to us. Okay. It was just a thought. Alright, so... Nothing in the cemetery. Though we don't know where the bodies went, but... It... Alright, the odds of some sort of undead creature going unnoticed in a town of this size is low. For any length of time. Yeah, so odds are they probably haven't been here very long. And just this is just a general thought. The th the second thought I had of a place I could hide is possibly there are certain abandoned structures we've seen them, the underground wizard's lair, the place where the grave robbers were hanging out last time. There are some abandoned houses and structures just outside Vern's Run, which would make the perfect hideout for a creature like this. Oh, good grief, I'm going to stop rolling with that. Seven! That was a two. I really badly. At least that's not terribly important at the moment. No, it's not. Um, where do you want to go? I mean, I did say that, but then again, there's a whole bunch of... There's a whole bunch of buildings that were just destroyed. In this town. There's a, so I assume there's a great many abandoned buildings, then. Alright. Uh, before we came to town... Yes. There was this abandoned building. It was destroyed in something that we don't know about. Yep. Since then, since the storm, we have added one, two, three... Uh, I think there's more than that. I can't really uh, there's two by the docks. And of course the uh, <laughs> the inn. Have been destroyed. Yeah. Recently. 
and the Platinum Dragon in. So there's no shortage of places where this creature could uh, hide. In town, but outside of town, I can only think of two. One of which we've been to recently. Never mind. Okay. So we've been to that underground wizard's laboratory a few times now. Yes. We have thoroughly searched it. Uh, we, well, recently with Barry, we did go over with a fine tooth comb because we were looking for possible stuff that he is either hiding there or, uh, you know, magical valuables. So. Yes. And we'd recently had an errand there. So, I think it's unlikely anything's hiding out there. Unless it moved in very recently. It can't hurt to check, I suppose. But there is another, if we actually just scroll up on the map a little bit. Oh, uh, the one where the, uh, we okay. ran into. Where the actual grave, we ran into the actual grave robbers initially. Yeah. yeah. Up there. There's another abandoned building. Yeah. Both of those are definitely within walking distance of the gates. Are the gate the gates are, we know at this point, the gates are locked after nightfall, presumably. No? Uh, they're not, like, locked. They're closed. Yeah. <clears throat> and they are man. Okay, so the odds of an undead creature getting out that way. Carrying. Five dead bodies. Yeah. Okay, odds are that, that I'm on the wrong track there, then, I think. Yeah, because there is some sort of patrol, presumably. And uh, door wards, I suppose, on the gates. Sorry, and door wards on the gates. Um, There's maybe, someone watching, basically. Well, yeah, the, the gates are banned. Yep. Uh, each of the gates is closed, and there is um, not really a parapet, but it is a little bit of a tower there, so the person can look over the top of the gate on both sides, uh, and there's usually someone there. So they have a they have a small watchtower that presumably get, gives them a bit of a vantage point and a bit of shelter from the elements. Yeah. And then obviously during normal times, yeah, it's kind of like cool and a knob sort of approach to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's not really you know that uh, crucial because most people don't come to go in the middle of the night. Okay. Well, lately things have been going a little wonky, and yep. I think uh, you probably noticed that uh, Watch is being a little bit more thorough when they do things, they're not being as slack, uh, mostly because, you know, um, I'm sure the upper echelons have been telling them to, you know, smarten up and keep an eye out for things. Okay. So, I think from our, our discussion of that, that makes me think I'm on the wrong track about them coming from outside. That was a good... Alright, so that's two avenues I think we've uh, explored, at least mentally, at this point. Yep. Which means this thing has to be moving around in town. And has to be going unseen. So, unless this thing is invisible, which I suppose is possible. It has to operate... It has to be at least somewhere close by to where that tower is, I think. Yes, because there's a number of abandoned buildings there. Or at least ones that have been recently abandoned. Okay, so... Lunch. Walk there. Investigating, talking. Probably getting around 2.30, 3 o'clock by the time we get there. Okay. Do you have anything to add, I ask? Do you think there's anything wrong with my train of thought at the moment? <laughs> oh. No? I made a roll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, so there is an abandoned building right next to that tower, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I'm sure you landed on it. That one second. Probably should turn that off, that's why. <laughs> anyway. 
So, if this thing wants to go unnoticed, it would try being in the nearest spot to that tower, I think. That it wouldn't... that would go unnoticed. So I think we should start, start looking there. Alright, so we're gonna head along the not invisible road. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Okay, that is not a problem. That's it. Well, 2 to 3, 2 to 3, and 3 o'clock. Um, the weather's still fine. I mean, it's certainly not raining for a while. Um, how do you want to investigate? All right, so can we actually go into the building? This ruin, like, take a look inside. Okay. There's no. Uh, there's nothing that's there to prevent you from entering. Okay. So I'm trying to say it's a long about way. <laughs> All right. In that case, I think nothing is going to prevent a cat from just going from taking a little acrobatic right. leap and going in there and taking a look around. Or perception, I guess. It doesn't does it matter? Well it is active, but so, uh, that's fine. Yeah. I was gonna have her take a sniff and see if she smells that familiar scent. Where is she starting this? Uh, just near the house. I don't think it's going to matter with those rolls. <laughs> uh ten. That's below passive perception. Uh, yeah. I rolled two sevens. She starts sniffing around the outside of the building. Yep. But, uh, doesn't really come up with any kind of smell. Well, she comes up with tons of smells. We're near the dock area. Uh, but she does not pick up that, that sweet, necrotic, okay. you know. Yes, she doesn't. Okay, no undead scent. No. You want to do inside? Yeah, I might as well just take a look inside. Okay, the first one is still better. Okay, what is a cat's dexterity? I don't have that noted down, so let's have a look at that for a second. Let's do 18 total. Yes. Spots where she could have fallen through floors and stuff, but she's fine. Uh, she does not notice anything in here along the lines of what you're asking her to say. And nothing's trying to kill her, so. No. All right, I'll unsummon her then. I said, well, as far as I can tell, I don't think there's anything in here apart unless you want to, unless you think we should check it out ourselves. I think we should. We're not rolling well, are we? So, I think we should probably just head along the waterfront a little bit, because it seems to be an awful lot of damaged buildings. Uh, have Alice sniff. Yep. And I will get my owl to fly over. And it'll only take us maybe an hour to walk there and back. Okay, so we're going to walk the waterfront then, and I'm going to have Alice just sniff along the way. Should I just do this as a single check? Uh, no. We're gonna... We're gonna milk this for all we can. <laughs> because we've been rolling really badly. I want you to roll with advantage. I'm looking for that necrotic smell. And I'm gonna roll with advantage to see if I can spot anything. Well, not this one. Seven for the first roll. With advantage. Is <laughs> four and a three. I'm rolling well, terribly. There's an awful lot of rain and snow and human traffic through here. 
Yeah. Okay. How'd you do? Oh, way better than you. <laughs> um, but the thing that my whole spots mm-hmm. is not an undead or anything like that. It spots a very distraught woman holding, clutching very tightly, uh, a young girl. Yeah, okay. Just up ahead. I guess we can go see, uh... No, we're suddenly in link to the past. Wait, is this what is this one of the friend is this one of the friendly villagers who will not report on you to the guards or uh, but she decides uh, What harm can we do? <laughs> The anglerfish. Anglerfish, thank you. And sometimes he doesn't come until quite late and, you know, drunk and that sort of stuff. But he does provide for the family mm-hmm. and he doesn't do it very often. But lately, well, two days ago, with the docks destroyed, he's been working really extra hard. Yep. And doesn't really have time for anything. And he didn't come home last night. And she's been asking around, no one's seen him. Uh, she's been doing that all morning and well, for a good chunk of the afternoon now. And as you can see, it's wearing on her quite a bit. Okay. The other thing that has her really, really scared is late last night when the storm was happening, she's fairly certain she heard someone screaming. Not the scream of, you know, like kids playing kind of scream, but the kind of scream where it's like the you know, blood curdling kind of yeah. scream where it's definitely truly terrified or in intense pain. Yes, okay, so someone was doing death scream. A real scream. Yeah, a real scream, okay. Does she remember where this happened? Well, she was at home. At home. <laughs> so she remembers exactly where okay, it just, happened. I just meant the general area. somewhere to start and as for finding her husband i'm just going to ask this uh does your husband have a specific belonging something he always keeps on him that you can describe that might help us find him let's see god i'm rolling well (laughs) well at least one of us is Sounds a little odd, but he always keeps 
a lucky rabbit hole with him because he works under the docks and someone sold this to him years yeah. ago. He used to be someone oh. who used to go up and down the docks and said, this will keep you safe from... Who knows what? Yeah, you know, evil things that might want to eat you. And he's always kept it with him. All right, that's something that could work with locate object. All right. So I think we should head towards the area where she described that. But one of the things I was thinking of is because, well, apparently our inve our, or our mundane investigations aren't working out too well. I was thinking of maybe trying some magical means to investigate. All right, so what are you going to do? Well, first thought is to look for that rabbit's foot now. I was trying to th remember what uh, those bodies had on them, but it was mostly just... Uh, like leather armor and other and maces and uh, the dwarf had a the people we killed? Yes. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately the most recognizable thing I remember from that is the glaive and that's gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, unfortunately because uh, it was not something we were really thinking about at the time. Uh, it was an investigator I think I'm just going to go with the rabbit's foot as a starting point. So I can either cast locate object now and try and see if we can track down where her husband is, or at least where the charm or this charm is. Right, so or do you think we should head towards? Uh, we left her roughly both here. It's just further down the street anyway. Just another three four minute walk to her house. Yeah. Okay. Let's just go down there first as a starting point and see if we can find anything before I uh, uh, cast a spell here. Alright, so you want to just do a general investigation check first? Yes, right down, that down that side. Alright, go for it. Let's advantage. I will help you. <sighs> 13 with advantage. That's the total. My dice. You do not find anything of interest. It was a high DC. It was. Alright. Alright. Well, just looking around isn't working. Alright. say. Alright, I'm going to cast. Um, a bit more time's gone by. Okay. Okay, well, we're going to have to keep looking then. I am going to take out from my component pouch, component pouch the forked twig I have, and I'm going to, as I cast a spell, I'm going to just spin it in my hand, and that pool of blue rippling magic is going to form there, and the twig is going to start spinning like a compass as I cast locate object, trying to locate that rabbit's foot she described. No, but the rap so locate object can find me the nearest rabbit's foot, basically, because I'm not I'm not familiar with this object. Yeah. Within a thousand feet. Well, a thousand feet is most of the town, I imagine. A considerable amount of space. Yeah. All right. Where is okay? Where does the where does the my magic compass indicate? Okay, I assume that when you're uh, casting the spell, mm -hmm. you are standing with your back to her house. Yeah. And facing the waterfront. Yes. All right. Then you're getting the ping kind of off to your right and a little bit towards the water. So. All right. So. Yeah, I'm standing here, so down this way. Yeah, Alright, well, this spell lasts concentration up to 10 minutes, so uh, I can we can follow this. Yes. Alright. Off, Off we go. Alright. You're going to move me out of the way. You see this derelict house here? Yep. Of it. So, we, which way do you want to skirt around this? 
Uh, we'll go along the main road and skirt around that way, just to, because the docks took a lot of damage recently. The footing may not be the best there. Uh, the docks yeah. are over this way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's just go around the main road to avoid all that, though. Okay. So you get around this way. Yeah. And you do. Uh, what happens when you get near something? Like, does it start trying to point down? Uh, it can go up and down, yeah. It just, it will. So well, you do realize now that the magic of it is still pointing forward. Yeah. But Okay, so it's dipping down then, the, the twig. You get to uh, basically where the water is itself, and it points to you, well, it, it leads you directly to a dirty, muddy rabbit spot in, on the ground. Okay, well, no point in continuing to concentrate on the spell then, because we found what we were looking for. Alright, so I'll stop the spell, and I'll put the twig back in my component pouch, and I'll pick up the rabbit's foot. Yep. Alright then. Well, this points us in the right... Tr mud covered monkey charm. It has a bit of a... You can see the remnants of a cord. Yeah. And obviously got that broken. And you know, tied it to... I don't know. He didn't ask her whether she, he wore it around his neck or not. But, okay. Uh, I'm going to investigate this area, looking for any remnants of tracks, and I'm going to hopefully <laughs> roll better than I have before. Alright. Roll an investigation check. Okay. Do I have your assistance? You do. I've never done this before, <laughs> on a roll to have advantage for, but I am going to use one of my portents. Which is a 15, so that's one of the rolls. And I'm going to roll this one, because I have advantage. And that's a 2. So, uh, 15 plus 5 is 20. Just out of curiosity, can you roll that again? You want me to roll uh, the die again? Just, just, uh, just out of curiosity. Okay, it was a 2. Yeah. And a 7, what's the other one? Okay, so the portent is helping. Yes. <laughs> I was just curious. So, 20 uh, total. Well, dirty 20. Yeah. That's a good sign. Is this the same sort of coagulated blood that we found in the tower? Um, that would be a medical check. Okay. Oh, I don't have medicine. So, ten. Hard to say. Lots okay. of rain. All right, and these, uh, so, can we try and follow these tracks? Do they lead towards the water? Do they go inside this building? That will be a survival check. All right, can I get your assistance with this? Because you have survival. Yes, I also have medicine. You could have had my help with that. That was less important. Oh, good grief. Nine! Though advantage did avoid a net... I, I have rolled above 10 once so far. And, well, the advantage avoided a natural one. Uh, so, nine. You really can't, unfortunately, figure out where they head. No. Alright, well, the alternative is we just search this building first and then. Uh, <laughs> Alright. It is damaged, it got struck by lightning, and even though it was raining, 
Yeah. It could burn a little bit. There's a lot of structural damage. Again, there's a sign saying uh, hazard. Stay out. Yep. You can go in there. All right, let's go in and take a look. My luck is holding. Seven. Uh, we go in. Yeah. Floor is creaking a little bit because, again, fire, lightning, damage. Yeah. I would like to throw a dexterity saving throw now for me, please. Natural one. This is This has to be a record. <laughs> This has to be a record. Oh, that's just horrible. Yeah, especially since if there's any damage involved in what's about to happen, it's going to be doubled. Alright, we're walking along. You're spending a lot of time investigating, like, trying yep. to figure out stuff. You step on the wrong board. The board breaks. Yep. And you're through it. And, yeah, the nails scrape up the inside of your thigh. Ah! Well, that could have been a lot worse. Yeah. So we extricate you from the hole without yep. causing more damage. And uh, now can you roll me uh, investigation, please? All right. Say it was a man. Hopefully he'll get above him. <laughs> this is uncanny. That's a pair of fives for a total of ten. I mean, with that roll, I could just be missing everything. Yeah. They could be standing pretty much in front of you. I think I would notice that, to be fair. <laughs> if nothing else, it would probably try to attack me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what's the lighting situation in here? I assume it's still dawn, so. Did you say dawn? Still, there's still, sorry, still daytime, right? It is uh, after the supper hour now. Yeah. Clouds are rolled in. Uh, I mean, we had a semi clear day. Mm -hmm. uh, it is dim lighting at best. Alright, I will recast my light cantrip on the end of my staff. Right. So we have some light in here then. So that does light things up a little bit. Um, okay. Okay, I'll summon Alice yep. and have her smell to see if she notices anything. Ah, there we go. 22. Ah, there is the other side of the 10. Well, advantage, well, the other one was a 3. True. So. That's something. That's something. She uh, does not smell that necrotic smell. All right, so there's a dead body in here. Not here. Not here? No? Oh. All right, well, I want her to try and follow her nose, and we're just going to follow her, then. All right, so... A survival check for the cat, I guess. She's going to try tracking this. Give her advantage, because there's a scent base. Okay. Uh, 19. And they're huge, if memory serves. They're huge. They're... Well, not that huge. They're, they're medium size. Yes, they're but they are giant spiders. for spiders. <laughs> they're giant spiders. Yes. 
So, something killed this, and no one's noticed it, I say. So, so do you think the tree fell on it and killed it, or something else killed it and then the tree just fell on no, it? These, these trees <laughs> um, washed up the shore during the storm. So yeah. they were alive after that. Yeah. You'll have to do a medicine check for just a general investigation on the corpse to try and determine its death. Okay. I'll roll a medicine check with your assistance, hopefully. Okay, rolling a bit better now. 17. You notice uh, there are bite marks taken out of the spider. Okay, something has tried to eat it, or at least kill it, with, by biting it. Yeah. Alright, well, near as I can tell then. You roll a 17, right? 17, yes. So, humanoid dimensions? Roughly, yeah. Okay. Alright. I think whatever we're dealing with is in the water, then. It seems possible. Or at oh. least doesn't seem to mind the water. Okay, well, if it is undead, it doesn't need to breathe. So. I think we're going for a swim, then. Put on your uh, put on your wool cloak. It's not gonna help when you're in the water. It's not a wetsuit. <laughs> well, this is where all the clues are leading us. Unless you think I'm wildly the wrong track, in which case, if you have any other evidence, in which case, feel free to present it at this point. I don't disagree with your conjectures. <laughs> I disagree with swimming in freezing cold water. That's what I disagree with. I don't think it's something that. Uh, Well, I'm fine in the cold, but that means I'm the only one going down there. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the kind of thing where I'd have to roll a constitution check quite regularly to survive. Do you have enhanced ability prepared? Yes. You could cast a... Uh... Uh, yes, I do. You could cast Bear's Endurance on yourself and give yourself advantage and temper hit points. Well, it's either that or I go down alone. Eh, yeah, splitting the party it always works out so well. Fine. <laughs> I cast Paris Endurance. Okay, uh. 10 extra hit points. No, it's not 10. Huh? It's not on second person nerds. Roll 2d6. Six temporary points and you advantage on constitution checks as long as you maintain concentration. Alright. So unless I take some damage now. Alright. Are we going in then? You're going to put on your cap of water breathing? Oh, my cap of water breathing. I think I want to move upstream with a dead corpse first before I start breathing the water though. Okay, we can do that. And we're gonna go swimming. And I am roll a constitution saving throw right off the bat. And you mocked me for getting the boots. <laughs> that is a natural 20. You're fine. I'm not happy, but it's terrible. Okay. I'm going to keep my light cantrip up because obviously as we go down the water, we're not going to be able to see much. Straight roll or with advantage? Um, no, I'm helping. That's fine. Okay. I mean, it's not good, but it's better than what else I've been rolling. 12. <laughs> Alright. Simply because uh, this is something that you're aware of. That uh, silken nest. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. All right, then. That's interesting. Well, that was definitely a landmark we had down here, so let's go examine that. Alright, when you get about halfway there, yep. you start spotting um, dead aquatic spiders. Okay. Something killed all of them. Yep. And destroyed uh, their nest. Entirely, oh, sorry. You're not entirely sure how many there were, but you do count uh, more bodies, like more spider bodies. Mm -hmm. than we had seen. Yes. And I don't see any others. There are no other bodies here at all. Okay, they were collecting dead bodies. I think something might have decided to rob their larder. Well, the only way to be sure, though, of course, is to go inside. Well, we're here anyway. Let's go down and take a look. Yes. I mean, I don't, I'm not expecting to find too much inside here. Um, I would like you to, at this point, roll a constitution saving throw, but not for cold. And I'm going to do the same. Alright. So I don't have advantage on saving throws. Actually, neither do you. It's just checks. Yeah. Alright. Well, I have to roll. No, that's cocked. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Six. The uh, stench in here is overwhelming. Yep. And uh, you kind of lose your lunch. Okay. It is, the stench is like this really overpowering. Okay. Yeah, and because they, they are cooking everything. And they have really putrefied at this point. So yeah, you lose your lunch. Okay, well it's going to float to the surface. Move downstream, something. Uh, so I'll wait for that to pass. You don't want to stay here. This is going to take uh, another constitution saving throw on your part to stay. Okay, I think we can get out of here for the moment. All right. All right. Well. All right. I don't think I'm going to be able to go in there. I rolled a 24 or something. Yeah. Yeah, you're rolling well. I could cast clairvoyance inside there if we really need to take a look around, if you think we need to. Or do we just think this is. mind the smell as much as you? Yeah. Okay, you do that. I'll keep an eye out then for our friend. This will be a, a straight roll. Yeah. All right. Time for the crap out. Roll a three. All right. Do I have to roll a perception check because I'm just keeping watch to see if anything's coming with our? Yes, you do. No advantage. Okay. okay. Here. Natural one. All right. We do not manage to figure out anything. Anything. Good grief. And all the spiders are dead. And all the spiders are dead. Well, fortunately for my constitution saving throws, I am rolling really well. Unfortunately for mine, I don't think there's anything left in my stomach. No, it is past supper. Yep. Uh, you are still nauseous. Yep. Not to the point where you're going to throw up or anything, but if you had to get into a 
combat right now, you might have a little bit of trouble. Okay. Okay. That's before we start, you know, pushing our luck. We should probably head back to shore. Yes. Okay, we can head back up. And you are going to cast Prestidigitation on me until I am dry. <laughs> so that should just be once. <laughs> yeah, because... Concentration up to one hour. You can put on your warm wool cloak as well if you want. We can head back to the inn and sit by the. Alright. We haven't found out much, unfortunately. Something has taken a bunch of corpses, killed a bunch of. Of aquatic spiders. Possibly killed some uh, poor woman's husband. And has completely disappeared as far as we can tell. And we're no closer to finding out what it is. Well, I think we should head back and <laughs> take a rest and possibly pick this up in the morning. Unless you want to go out in the middle of the night to look for this thing. Yes, but we've been but we'll be pushing exhaustion at that point, I suspect. Unless we at least go back and have a short rest. <coughs> All right, so as we're heading towards the road, yeah, having this conversation, yeah, you hear a scream. Oh, well, that's usually a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> sure, except for the poor person screaming. Look, we've been having a really bad day. <laughs> Where direction is that coming from? Yep. We went around the upstream side, went yep. into the water. Yep. Swam back. And we're starting to make our way towards the street having this conversation. And we hear a scream coming from just over this direction. Alright, well, we'll head in that direction, I guess. Is my light cantrip still going? If not, I'll recast it. Uh, you cast that before I cast Enhance Ability, but uh, it wasn't that long ago, I don't think. No, okay. Yes. Alright. As we head towards the, that screen, you do spot something. You spot. Finally! Because <laughs> yeah, there's no rolls involved. Uh, you spot what looks like. Okay, this is new. Yeah. 